All right, so if there is one thing that we know, is that this is a Dosser's favorite view. All these terminal screens, throwing out them packets, targeting that host. This is all for educational purposes only. Do not repeat this. In this video, we will be reviewing and demoing CVE 2023-44487, which is the novel HTTP2 rapid reset attack for denial of service. We're going to be sourcing a little POC from GitHub, spawning up some Docker containers to show how this works. So for those of you interested in the demo, which I kind of fail, you can use the timestamps below. Uh, but a little bit of background information on this CVE and this more of a feature of HTTP2. So on October 10th, 2023, a coordinated announcement was made between Google, AWS, and Cloudflare talking about a novel HTTP2 attack, specifically the rapid reset attack, uh, and they re recorded a record-breaking 398 million requests per second on the Google network. As stated here in the Bleeping Computer article, Google was able to mitigate this attack by adding capacity to their edge network, and uh, Cloudflare and AWS also commented uh, and talked about some record breaking attacks on their networks, respectively. These record breaking DDoS attacks occurred using or abusing an inherent feature of HTTP2, which is streams. Now, as the name suggests, HTTP2 is a second version replacing HTTP 1.1, and a simple Google search will show that around 36% of the top million websites right now support or use the HTTP2 protocol. One improvement of HTTP2 is the use of streams, which are bidirectional abstractions used to transmit various messages or frames between clients. Now, streams are multiplexed in a way where both sides of the connection can be connected over one layer for TCP connection. In HTTP 1.1, this was done sequentially per request. Now, summarizing from Google here, they do a good job of explaining the novel HTTP 2 rapid reset attack. So sourcing from Google here. So on the server end, the server will read a request, process it, write a response, and only then read and process the next request in HTTP 1.1. So in practice, this means that the rate of requests that can be sent over a single connection is one request per round trip, where a round trip includes network latency, proxies, and anything else. With HTTP2, the client can run multiple connections via streams over one TCP connection, and each stream corresponds to basically one HTTP request. The maximum number of concurrent open streams is, in theory, controllable by the server, but in practice, it may be around 100 streams per request. And the servers can process these requests in parallel because they're tagged with an ID. One feature of the HTTP2 protocol is the ability for a client to request a cancellation of a stream uh, by sending a RST underscore stream frame to the server and the server and the client don't have to coordinate any sort of cancellation. So the client can do this unilaterally. So this attack is called rapid reset because it allows a client or endpoint to send that reset stream frame immediately after sending an open hello request to the server. If you continue to do this in a forever loop where you are sending a hello frame, then a reset frame, it will eventually overburden the server because basically it leaves the HTTP2 uh, connection open, but you canceled the request. So exploiting this feature really is relatively simple. Uh, all you need to do is write a script, which has a forever loop, uh, and where you basically go out and say hello, and then you send a reset stream, and you continue to do that over and over again until it overburdens the server. Uh, so with this background information, I wanted to actually test this, and I decided to use Docker containers and a small POC I sourced from GitHub. So onto the demo and yeah, it's kind of a fail. Okay, so here up in my demo environment, in front of me, I have two Docker containers running. I have decided to leverage Docker as running containers is relatively easy. You can build from base images and you can also simulate resource consumption uh, or limitations, which would maybe kind of mock a regular real world web server. So on the bottom left here, I have container one, which is a basic Apache 2 web server running on a localhost. And I have 
uh, HTTP2 installed, as well as a small self-signed certificate to simulate HTTPS. Uh, HTTPS is a fundamental concept that was built into HTTP2, uh, so I did have to provision this and run that on port 443. To enable HTTP2 on Apache, it's relatively easy. All you need to do is a 2 mod HTTP2, and to test this, you can use curl, uh, and if we do this, you can see that it actually upgrades from 1.1 to 2, and you get a 200 request here. So we're good on the web server. So Docker Container 2 on the top left here is in the attacker machine. Specifically, I have the Golang environment installed to run my POC, and I am sourcing this POC from an individual on GitHub called SecEng Jeff. Uh, so full credit goes to this individual here who created this POC, and uh, it's all up on GitHub, link in the description below. So if we actually go to my localhost domain here, you can see that I, you know, I'm just getting the standard HTTPS certificate, and it's a basic welcome to Apache 2. So with this all enabled here, I already have my command entered into my Docker container. Basically, what this is doing is setting some limitations on how many requests I want to add, the wait time between the requests, the delay, and um, you can read more about the concurrency using the GitHub page. Now, in order to simulate a real web server environment, two Docker containers, of course, isn't going to do it. So what I have done is I've added memory in CPU constraints to my Docker Compose file here. Uh, specifically, as you can tell, I'm adding only 10 megabytes of memory and 0 0.01 CPUs provisioned to this web server. So this is basically to emulate resource limitations and basically make the attacker machine a lot more powerful than the web server machine. In a real world environment, specifically with production servers, there will be load balancers or likely proxies sitting in front to distribute and filter the requests. This does not apply to us specifically. In addition, the attacker would need to have a network of bots running the script, adding those HTTP2 requests. Now, you definitely wouldn't have to have nearly as big of a botnet network as you would for other layer seven attacks. So that is one of the benefits of this particular attack. Uh, so with that all in mind, let's actually just run the script here and, and you done with the talking. Uh, so if I actually just and hit enter, as you can see here, the script is sending frames followed by that reset stream. So if I go into my web server and choose top, you're going to see that the CPU load here is uh, going up subsequently. And actually we can go into Docker desktop and it gives you a little bit of a CPU usage here. Uh, so specifically, as you can tell, it's not 100% CPU usage. This will not overburden this particular web server because it's just one Docker container. And this is where my failure kind of came in was that um, I realized that even setting those memory uh, restrictions using the Docker Compose file, uh, if Docker host or the Docker engine sees that there are still available resources, which on my machine there are, it's going to still use them. So um, now if you actually had, let's just say, hundreds of containers running and pinning this specific web server container, of course, you would absolutely see this CPU usage go up. But, you know, as of always, in demo scenarios, nothing ever works out. Okay, so I'm cutting in here from my original demo. It was bothering me with uh, the CPU usage specifically with one Docker container. And I realized really quickly that I could just spawn up like five Docker containers. So this is what I've done. I've spawned up five Docker containers all running the rapid reset script, as you can see on the bottom of my screen here. Uh, and the CPU load is... I mean, it's kind of gone up, I guess. It, not too much, but... Uh, as you can tell, it's amplifying the CPU usage compared to, of course, just one Docker container. So ideally, if you were in a well, real world environment, you would, could have you know hundreds of Docker containers spawning into local hosts. So what this proves here is that, of course, the more containers or hosts you have querying over HTTP2 to this basic Apache 2 web server, the more percentage of CPU that it's going to consume. So in a real world environment, the more network of bots you have attached 
attacking a, a particular web server, of course, the attack percentage is going to be amplified. And yeah, so basically still a fail. I'm not dosing my local host, but, uh, you know, further proves the point. It, it can happen. Just have to have more compute power. So what are the mitigations for this attack? Well, it's not as simple as applying a patch to a vulnerability, given that this is an inherent feature of the HTTP2 protocol. Uh, so Google in their article recommends that you monitor how many reset stream uh, requests or frames are being sent from a client. And if it goes over a certain threshold, maybe 50 is over a certain period of time, uh, then you can block that particular IP address or client. Uh, so this is really building a heuristic based off of the behavior of clients, but uh, there is really no straightforward path for implementing a, uh, a mitigation for this vulnerability. And that's what makes this unique. Now, luckily, HTTP 3, which is, of course, the third version of the HTTP protocol, will not carry over this feature. So that is good as clients move over to HTTP 3. But as noted, there are still a large number of top websites using HTTP 2 and HTTP 1.1. So we'll see how long that takes. Hopefully, you've learned something new with CVE 2023-44487. I think it's an interesting uh, type of vulnerability because it's more of a feature rather than an inherent uh, code mistake, for example. And so the failure was, of course, in the demo, but hopefully it got the point across that this is definitely doable and you only need a large or well, small network of bots to actually make this work. Uh, so hopefully you learned something new and yeah, until the next video, have a good day.